Good morning, Shad. Jared, until the others join, I'm going to send a link to the chat. Good morning, Heidi. Hi, Samir. Hi, Hassan. Good morning, Miss. How are you? Okay, I'm, I'm going to send a link. And I want you guys to, uh, to answer the first question. Good morning, Kamel and Celia. Good morning. Good morning, Miss. Uh, I would like you guys to answer the, the question, the link. Good morning, Miss. Good morning. Just can you send the link for the Good morning, Miss? Yes. Can you please resend the link? Yeah, exactly. Yes, I'm resending right now. Okay. Okay, Robert Frost and Maya Angelou both belong to which which uh, movement in poetry? Is it the Romanticism movement, contemporary movement, or none of the above? Miss, I think it was romanticism. I put romanticism okay, because guys, you talked about it last session. It's okay, but don't answer uh, live. Just put your answer in the... Okay. Okay, be careful when you're answering. Remember, at first we talked about Edgar Allan Poe. Yes, can you? What is the meaning of uh, contemporary? So I forgot because. Hey, were last you time. here last time? In the yes, yes, I was. I contemporary, forgot. Contemporary, good, good question. Anyway, contemporary is the, the modern movement in poetry. The oh, then my answer is wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it's okay. That's why I I do uh, these. Uh, you know little questions at the beginning to make sure everybody understands. So I think none of the above. Come on. Okay, just don't say any answers uh, orally. Just put what you think in the in the answer box. Okay, Robert Fro Frost. Is hot actor Mara? No, no, I, Hello, I'm not sure, try. Maybe you can. Maybe you can. Good morning. Good morning, Adam. Okay, this, this bar is disappointing. You guys see a lot of answers somewhere and then you, you answer that that way? It's and definitely not. Yeah, Ahmed was right. I am resending. Yes, I think my <laughs> answers are for like seven right actors. She was, yes, yes, that's, just don't answer that yet. Okay, uh, first of all, what did we read in the last week, not this week, week 25? Who did we read? Supernatural. Oh, okay, Poe and, and who? 
and Annabelle. Annabelle Lee. Annabelle Lee, okay. Which belong to which which epoch in in poetry? Hassan, Hassan, you raised your hand. Two participants raised their hand. Adam. It uh, belonged to romanticism. Romanticism. Edgar Allan Poe was belonged to the romanticism period. That is what that means. What they wanted to. Okay, the world is advancing. Yes. Yes. I uh, missed that was an echo of your voice. Okay, I'm sorry. They wanted to go back to, to that time when nature was so beautiful, okay, when everything was so fine before technology. Those were the romantics, the romanticism, okay, like Edgar Allan Poe. But this week, we took two different authors, two different poets, Robert Frost and Maya Angelou. Where do they belong? Ahmed Audi, where do those belong? Which movement? None of those movements. Why? Contemporary. Yes, they are contemporary poets. They are both modern poets. And how are they different from the romantics? Oh, then my answer is right, miss. Okay. Good. So your answer is right. They are both a contemporary poets. How are they different from romantic poets? The ones that came... They actually weren't satisfied with the improvements that had occurred in the society and the cultures. Okay. They, they were, they wanted not to, to be nostalgic and go back to yes. old times. Because my angel was against real the life. Times, you know? Yes, they addressed the real life issues. They confronted, yes, they confronted them. Exactly. Not go, not to be romantic and go back to the old days and talk about how nature was beautiful, how the world was beautiful. Those were realists. Okay. They wanted to talk about life issues. Uh, the different choices you make, what you're passing through. They talk about what's happening to the real modern. life examples. Yes. So, Adam, what's happening to the modern person, to the modern world person? What's going on? Um, like what? Give me an example. Cheating. Okay. What's that? Miss, what do you mean by the question? Okay, what, what's going on in the modern world? How do we feel? Okay, how uh, feel? everyone is getting addicted to social media, okay. media and uh, video games. Yeah, where we feel alienated, we feel isolated, etc. The modern poet would write about this clearly and frankly. He wouldn't go and talk about the old times about how beautiful things are and how beautiful nature is. Even though I, you know, I appreciate both uh, types of poetry. I love both types of poetry. But the correct answer here is that Maya Angelou and Robert Frost both belong to the modern or contemporary movement in poetry. Okay, now second question. I think this should be very easy. Maya Angelou was a poet and? A doctor. No, a doctor. No, no. 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 Was she a doctor, poet, and a doctor, poet, and an engineer, poet, and a civil rights activist? Can you send the link? Oh, okay. civil rights activist. Okay, don't answer, please. Let them answer. Because we thought you were asking us because you didn't send yeah. the link. Oh, okay. Okay, it's the same link. No problem. Okay, someone still insists that she's a doctor. Well, she she has a PhD. <laughs> But uh, she, well, th that could be somehow right. Yes, that could be somehow right. She has yes, a... Miss, I did my Google research. She, she is, she has a PhD, so I'll accept that answer. But what is she known for? She is a civil rights activist. Okay. Yes. Okay. She was there also during the times of Martin Luther King. Mrs. She's dead, right? She is. The, she died recently in 2015. Okay, uh, I'll send you oh. uh, an, uh, something about her uh, on YouTube. She's a real influence. Like, um, mostly see like her picture and quotes and those stuff. Quotes. That be... Yes, we, we all yeah. appreciate her. Many people appreciate her quotes. Truly inspirational. Okay, I think. Uh, yeah. 
With the romantic poets, at that time, there were advancements in the cultures and the societies, but they didn't used to talk about them, right? Yes, exactly. Because of those advancements, so much technology, nature is changing, those poets wanted to go back to the old times when everything was still so beautiful. So uh, because the nature's beauty was drifted away from cultures, exactly. right? Exactly. And they were also... Uh, not only poets, but also many novels were written during the Romantic period. Many beautiful novels in English literature. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, let's go now to our lesson. Okay, so we know she is a civil rights activist. Um, let's start reading the poem together. I will read the first stanza and then you guys can uh, start reading. I know why the caged bird sings. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wing in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. Do you notice any particular rhyme or rhythm there? No, nothing. No. There's, there's nothing that rhymes. Not nothing. Okay, this is another characteristic of modern poetry. Second stanza, Adam. Yes, but a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bards of rage. Bards of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. Okay. Third uh, stanza. Just... Mr. Sharif is telling you he can't join. Sharif says he can't join. Okay, thanks, Adam. Uh, third stanza, um, let's see. Hassan? Any volunteers before I pick? I can be. Yes. Um, the caged bird sings. Uh, the caged bird sings with a fearful thrill of the things unknown, but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill. For the caged bird sings of freedom. Okay, this is probably the most beautiful stanza in uh, in the poem. The caged bird sings with a fearful thrill. Do you know what a thrill is? Okay. Did you check the voice? It is like, it's the no. trembling sound, no. the trembling voice. A trembling sound, the, the sound that a bird sings, the trill of a bird, okay? It's fearful of things unknown, but longed for still. What does longed for mean? Wanted. Wanted, okay? This bird doesn't know what, but it still wants it. Uh, freedom. Yes. Freedom, this bird is caged, but it still longs for this freedom, okay? And his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. Why do you think, uh, Ahmed Audi, uh, why do you think the author said he concerning the bird? Why didn't, didn't she just say it? Because he didn't really mean the bird. Okay, he yes. The people. Exactly. She wanted... he was talking about a person. Yes. She. Yes, good. Uh, she was personifying the bird to, to make it, uh, okay, feel more real. Uh, fourth stanza, Cynthia, uh, Celia, Celia. Yes, miss. Fourth stanza, please. The caged bird or another one? Stanza. The caged bird. The fourth one is the free bird. One, two. Oh, okay. Yes. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade went soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a down bright loan and he named the sky his own. Okay. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade went soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own. What's dawn? Midnight. No way. No, it's, it's um, 
when the sun rises. Yes, the, the, the moment the sun rises, that's like 5 a.m. Yeah. Dawn, yes, like 5 a.m. nowadays. Just said the opposite. Yeah, dawn is when the sun starts coming out. Okay, if, uh, stanza number five. Um, who do I have here? Sammy didn't join today. Okay, uh, Ya'oub. Miss, yes. I'm in the live, what do you mean? Sammy, you're here? Okay, good. Ya'oub, would you please read and then Sammy can read. Uh, the free bird? But a fifth stanza. One. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, but a caged bird uh, stands on the grave of dreams. His shadow shouts uh, on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. Okay. Uh, okay the you. caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill. For the caged bird sings of freedom. Okay, thank you. Now let's go on to our exercises. Many of you sent the homework yesterday. You guys did a good job. Uh, but I was actually disappointed that some of you did not send. So I didn't even know we had the homework. Yes, yeah, same. I didn't know, Miss. Why? Yes, Miss, me too. Why? Weren't you in the, the live homework. session yesterday? I said, yeah, I can can be one minute. Oh, she... Yes, but didn't I send it to the group or so. I sent it to the group? That's why we have a group. Okay, no problem. Anyway, uh, now uh, let's comment on the rhyming in the poem. Okay, we have an activity also, so we do have an activity. I'll talk about it uh, later. Well, what do you uh, think about the rhyming in the poem, Adam? Oh, I remember. And stanza okay. one, uh, none of uh, the words rhyme. There is no rhyme. There, there is no rhyme. Okay. So, so what do you think about the rhyming scheme in this whole poem? What do you think? It's horrible. Horrible, yes. Okay. What do we call this uh, poem that doesn't have a specific rhyming scheme? It's just Free verse. Yes, it's called a free verse. And this is an, a characteristic uh, of contemporary poetry. This is how I answered. It seems that there is no specific rhyming scheme in Maya Angelou's poem. As we do not see a pattern of rhyme, therefore it is more of a free verse. There is no pattern. Sometimes it rhymes, but most of the time it's free. Okay. How many of you answered a similar in a similar way. Several, several of you told me that there was no specific pattern. Okay, name one instance of internal rhyme in the poem. I'm gonna share the poem again. Miss, I didn't understand this question. Okay, internal rhyme. Let, let me uh, re-explain that. Internal rhyme is when words in the same line rhyme together. Not the ending words, words within the same line in a poem. Yes, miss, there is a loan and loan. Okay, where is that? Yes, exactly. Good. Uh, stanza four, line three. Okay. okay, waiting on a dawn bright lawn. We just read that. That's called internal rhyme. Okay, Adam, rhyming uh, okay. within a certain line. Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Third question. Okay. Uh, uh, now in B. Yes. Okay, yes, B. Uh, think critically and answer the following questions. The poet, uh, the poet says, dips his wing and dares to claim the sky when talking about the bird. What figure of speech is that? Let me- The personification? Oh, okay, okay, sorry. You can answer, you sorry, can miss. answer, it's okay. What is it? Personification. Okay, why? Because the author gave a human quality to the bird, which is dipping. Okay, good. So uh, would you please read the answer, Ahmad? Yes. Um, the phrase is dips his, the phrase is, uh, dips his wing 
and there is to claim the sky are in, intenses of personification in the poem. This is because the poet is giving human qualities to the bird. The literally a device evokes more feeling feelings and uh, adds more beauty to the poem, making it more captivating. Okay. Captivating. Exactly. Why does the author use personification or similes or metaphor to it's make hooking? Yes, it's hooking to make it more captivating and attractive to the reader. Okay, uh, why do you think the author repeats, let me choose someone, why do you think the author repeats the third stanza at the end of the poem? Okay, let me share this. The author, the third and sixth stanza are the same. Why are they repeated? Mm. May I answer? Yes, you may. Um, the author repeats the third stanza in the last one uh, to prove the importance of freedom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, she's she is stressing a certain point there. Good. Does anyone have a different way of answering that? Anyone answered yes, it? Miss, make, yes. Um, to make it more lyrical and musical. Yes, maybe to make it more lyrical and musical. Good, Adam. Miss, I wrote to emphasize an idea, rhythm, or a feeling. Yes, that's also true. To emphasize the idea of freedom, to emphasize the rhythm, to emphasize the feeling that is evoked in this stanza. Okay, all your answers are, are pretty good. So this is what I wrote. The author repeats the third stanza to emphasize the sense of longing that the bird was feeling for freedom. He was singing fearfully of things unknown but longed for still. Okay, what do the caged bird and the free bird symbolize? Ahmad Farhad, what is the caged bird and what is the free bird? The, the caged bird symbolizes the, uh, the unfair treatment of black people and how they have no freedom and the uh, Okay. Free bird symbolizes how white people are, have freedom and are treated fairly with rights. Okay, yes. So the caged bird is the person whose freedoms have been robbed away. And the free bird symbolizes the privileged person who has his uh, freedoms. Would you please read it? Uh, read the answer. Let's see. Hassan? Hassan, uh, Hassan Lassal, would you please read the answer for number three? Yes, miss. Yes, answer please for number if three. If you put Maya Angelou's poem in the con context of the time she wrote it, we recognize that the caged bird represents the people who have not yet been granted their civil and human rights and feel like they live in a cage of prison and long for freedom Mm -hmm. the, free, the free bird represents the people who are privileged and are enjoying their rights and freedom. Okay, so this is what they symbolize. Now, based on your acquired knowledge of Maya Angelou, why do you think she wrote this poem? Okay, we already yes. have an answer for that. Yes? Yeah, because she's a civil rights activist, which is against the uh, distreatment of humans. Yes. Or people that are treated unfairly. Exactly. Maya Angelou. Miss, can we say, mm -hmm. miss, can we say that uh, she wrote this poem to it and to put emphasis on the importance of equality between people? Yes, yes, exactly. And as he said, also since she was a civil rights movement, her work was dedicated to uh, her civil rights activism. Yes. Okay. So many of her works. I wish you guys would, uh, you know, in this coming activity, which is extra credit, but I really want you to participate. Just Google, check out some of her other poems, which are really so beautiful. Okay. Now. Yes, we will. Okay, please do that. Now, uh, the answer I wrote, Maya Angelou is a Black American who was a civil rights activist. She fought for the rights of Blacks in the US. She used her literary work to advance the cause of the Black people in works such as I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. 
Okay, now those were pretty easy, I think. Which literary device is used in the phrase his bars of rage? Um, let me choose someone, please. Hassan Mahsin? Jad? Sami, would you please answer that? Yes, yes, Miss. Please, can you? Miss, okay. what was the question? Okay, which, it's number one in C. Which literary device is used in the phrase, his bars of rage in the second stanza? Is it a simile? Metaphor or personification? Miss, please, can I see the, the yeah. sentence? Well, I have the answer already. Okay, so it's a metaphor. Why do you what? think it's a metaphor? The sense. I can't see the sense. You can't see? Miss, I think uh, I wrote it's a personification because Same. that the bards are rage. Okay. The human quality rage. Yeah. I accepted also that answer, and I expected some of you to write personification. Both are correct, uh, but uh, you need to justify it well. Uh, those who wrote metaphor, Fatima, why did you say it was a metaphor? But the question didn't ask to justify. Yes, yes it didn't. It didn't. Yes, miss, he used the metaphor here because he was comparing the bars to anger. Yes, okay, his bars of rage. Yes, exactly, that's why it's a metaphor. You wrote personification and you justified it well. Uh, I will also accept the answer. Okay. okay. The bird in the cage is singing because, okay, I, he is feeling bored, he is trying his talents, he longs for freedom, or he is happy. He longs for freedom. Yes. Uh, yes. Exactly. What kind of a song is the bird singing? Can you describe his song? It's called Help Me. Help Me, exactly. How would you describe it? Longing. He was scared. Longing, scared, exactly. That's He's not fun. Uh, longing, scared, fearful was also used to describe it. Because he had a fearful thrill in his voice when he was singing. Exactly. Okay, the free bird demonstrates freedom and power when it does what? Okay. Okay, the, the, when it claims the sky, what does claim yes. the sky mean? Reaches the sky. Own the sky. Own when, the sky. When he flies in the sky as yes. well, like that's what they mean here. That when he owns the sky. Okay, now I have enough time to go to the activity and talk about what you guys might do. Okay, let me just uh, share the screen with the activity. Yes, you have 12 minutes. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of time. That was unexpected. unexpected. Yeah. Well, well, you guys are pretty good. Okay, H has anyone uh, thought of an activity yet? Some of you, you know, Fatima has already oh. you know, chosen two different activities. Yes, yeah. she will give me one. Yeah, sure. Okay, just give me a minute to open the PowerPoint with the activity. Yes, we have to the next. Uh, Tuesday. Uh, we have, I'm going to give Sorry? you time. You have till next, till next Tuesday. You have till next Friday. I'm going to give you time because I want uh, a well done. Okay. Activity. Okay. It's, uh, this week's quiz is the last one in this semester. It's the last one. Right? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, no. So oh, this no. extra credit will, will help you especially those who haven't been doing well. Okay, 
just half a minute. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question until this thing uh, uh, opens. Uh, how do you know that Maya Angelou is a modern poet? What in her what in her poem uh, says that she is a modern poet? Belongs to the contemporary uh, period. Uh, she uses a free verse. Okay, first of all, she uses a free verse. Good. What else? What what does she talk about? She's talking about Freedom? something that that is happening right now. Yes, yes. at the time. Oh, slavery and yes, yes, they said uh, he claimed the sky. He's talking yeah. about a current issue. Yeah. Talking about isolation. Yes. And that we are still facing. Exactly. Real life situations. Okay, let me just... Uh, Okay, when, when it's on Zoom Live, it takes time to open a file. It's, it lags a lot, but we're getting there. Okay, let's... no problem. Thank you. We have ten minutes. So, yes, we do. So, which of the poets, which of the poets we read, did you like the most? Um, Poe, first one. This, this is Poe. Poe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's maybe the first, first one. one. Yes. Yeah. It was very nice. Okay, I'm still trying to open this. It's opening finally. I felt like this one is a text more than a poem. Miss, what are we going to take after we finish poetry? Uh, we're going to go back to our themes. Uh, we're going to take the theme of drugs and alcoholism. Oh, okay. Okay. Adolescents. Uh, among adolescents mostly, but in, in society in general. Okay, uh, let, let me, until the PowerPoint opens, let me tell you what the three things you, you can do. First of all, you can write a poem. Some of you have already decided to write a poem. Two, you can choose any poem you want from a very well-known poet and tell me about the symbolism, the figures of speech, etc. Three, you can choose to write about a poet, any well-known poet, like if you're interested in Edgar Allan Poe or Maya Angelou, Robert Frost, you can even choose uh, poets that we didn't talk about like Sylvia Plath and others and tell me about their lives. So this is really up to you, okay? Okay, this is- Miss, we can talk about any poet, even if we didn't take, if, even if we didn't take um, anything about him. Definitely. Uh, yeah. If you want, we can share some, uh, okay. some names now. Let's see, what poets can we- We did miss in, the, in that uh, question, in the last session yesterday. Yes. I, I Fine, if we Google poets, we can, we can find a lot of poets. Okay. Let me let me share the screen now with the Okay, there it is. Thank God, finally. Okay. Can you see the screen now? Is everybody still with me? Hopefully. Not yet. Okay, great. So activity Started one. Screen sharing. Yeah, Not yet. But still screen. Not yet. It hasn't been yes. yes. Okay. Still loading. Still loading. Okay. Let's give it a minute or so. Can you see it now? Yes, it opened. Yes. So activity one, talk, write a poem about nature, anxiety. Okay. Anything, you know, uh, that, uh, that you would like to write about, a phobia, friendship, your country, an imaginary world, really, I don't care. I just want a nice poem 
it can be either free verse, free without a rhyming scheme, or you can write a rhyming scheme. That would be interesting. Activity two, choose one poem from any of the following authors. You can even choose any different author or poet, Edgar Allan Poe, Langston Hughes, by the way, another uh, civil rights activist, uh, one of my favorite poets, William Wordsworth, another amazing poet, Walt Whitman, uh, oh, Captain, my captain, the one who wrote that, Robert Frost and Maya Angelou. Choose one poem and talk about it. Or you can choose activity three to talk about any poet, about his or her life, her struggles, her famous works, what he or she was famous for. So you choose. Is it clear okay. now? Okay, is the activity clear now? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. So I guess this is it for today. If you don't have any further questions, uh, the session is over. Thank you, Miss. Okay, thank, thank you. you thank you. For listening. If you have thank any you questions miss. concerning the activity, please ask me. Okay, bye. Miss Kilwan, do we have time? Uh, till next Friday. Till next Friday. Like and we can choose uh, any activity we want? Any activity. Any activity. Okay, I will send yes, it in 10 you. minutes to the group. Okay, written and everything. Okay, see you guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, Miss.